Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful. You're beautiful. I'm, I'm a mess today, but I'm very excited to be a mess today because things are changing in especially uh, here in New Jersey and uh, are open up today. To, actually, that's very confusing. Today, my best friend is supposed to have a party and I went over her house yesterday and I started helping her. But this morning, I got a phone call that we are going to be postponing the party because the weather outside is not as perfect as tomorrow is going, supposed to be. Look, I'm a mess. Um, you're beautiful. You're beautiful, my friend. So anyway, so I am a little bit a mess, but I am here. That's all that matters. got to be here. And um, today, we're going to talk about certain things that I find it to be the most important thing ever, ever about when you're deciding to have a party, when you're deciding to celebrate, which is... How can we make that party special, memorable? How can we create this party in a way that um, it's going to count towards something? Because it's not, it, I, I tell you guys over and over again, party, it's, if you just think about the logistic thing, it's just a time, a period of time that we all get together to celebrate something, drink, eat, dance, have fun with friends and family, right? But I believe, honestly believe parties more than that. Party, parties, it, it's, it's, a, it's way more important than just to get together with family, friends, and drinking and eating. I think that's time that we build memories into our friends, our family, our kids, memories that are going to be lasting forever. And that's what I think is important about parties. And this is a subject that I want to talk about it today. Like, uh, how can we make a party memorable? So basically, what we have to stop and think and analyze is how can we create a strategy to make it count? How can we make that moment where we're stopping to celebrate with friends and families and that get together, not to be just a night like every other night because when we do a party that's what we're doing it it's more than just every other night it's 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 a special that day has to be special so what can we do for that day to stand up to be different and that's what causes memories like it's funny because i've been trying to read and i am going to invite a friend of mine who's actually a neuroscientist to talk about uh things that trigger memories because if you stop and think about things that trigger memories, most of it, unfortunately, uh, there's like different sides of uh, different parts of the brains that are triggered differently. And there's a part of the brain that triggers things due to like uh, chaotic things, problems, and that's the most common. But there's also part of the, the brain that's responsible for triggering memories that carries with us because when uh, what these memories are for what i'm uh, reading and understanding it is just um this uh, it's not an energy I, I don't know how exactly how to explain it but it's this memories is turned into a brain uh, inside her brain into some kind of uh, i'm gonna have to call her here and discuss this with us but it's super super interesting she, as we discuss about possibilities of doing a live what we can talk about it it's like the importance of certain memories and how can we trigger those memories to be uh um trigger that's part of your brain for the memories to be there and you always remember it and this is what i want you all to think about it when you're planning a party how can we find a way to trigger in the guests, in the family, in your kids, in your mom, whoever the party's for, somebody who's going to be special. How can we create that? How can we plan and create this trigger that's going to last uh, for a lifetime? Probably. I'm like, basically, you know, and it's funny because it's so interesting because a brain can actually play tricks. Sorry, I'm a mess. Our brain can actually play tricks with us and creates also what they call false memories, like different parts of the brain. I find it fascinating. Like I love this neuroscience things. And like, it's so funny how like every day we find new things that are related to that. And even a party, which is something that seems to be very stupid, it's not because a party does that a good party a party that you can trigger this memory can last for the rest of your life and 
and that's what's important about it. It's like, how can we create these memories to be remembered? How can we have this party made in a way that it's going to trigger that? And sometimes, because like those triggers are sense, sensory, um, I'm going to have to ask her to come in and explain, but it's a sensory thing that's caused by vision, sense of smell, um, things like that. And of course, like when you go to a party, that's something that you never seen it before. That's the first impact that you have. So right there, you have like one trigger that exposes your vision to remember something that they never seen it before. But also it has the emotional part of how to trigger something, which is not just the visual part, but uh, the what emotion can you cause that person for something in that party to affect someone. We can never forget our memories for in our parties. Oh no, absolutely. But that's the thing. Like if you know certain people have this naturally on them and they know how to plan parties and cause this effect on everybody. And that's why, for example, that person over there, Sonia, she's known for her parties. Every time that she invites, she's a she's a friend, customer, client, and now she's gonna be my coworker, right, Sonia? <laughs> She just started doing desserts and uh, and I'm looking forward to refer her. So basically what I'm trying to say is like sometimes like Sonia, people like Sonia, she naturally has this ability of come up with creative ideas to make her party interesting. And it's funny because like every guest that goes to her party I always expect something from her, like something that's going to happen. You know, that's something that she's doing. What's going to be next? Uh, and every time she invites people, people show up. The same thing I have with this party that I'm doing tomorrow. It's just like uh, she's so known for throwing different parties, things that are not normal. And then all their friends and family are looking forward for the party. And it, it's just fun how some people have that naturally know how to create this part of designing a party that can be fun and can lead to uh, memories like that, that you're knowing for it. Like, for example, oh, I can't wait to be at Sonia's parties because you know she throws the best parties ever. It could be just the food. It could be the design. It could be whatever it is, the entertainment. Like, uh, it's it's just finding something that's going to be special. So basically... That's what we're going to be talking about. Not directly into neuroscience uh, as a neuroscientist, because I am planning on inviting this person over. She probably, she, she I don't know if she's going to be listening. Every once in a while, she's here. So if you're here, see them. <laughs> she's upstairs from me. She's my neighbor. Uh, I want to invite you for a live, and I'm going to be making that phone call to make it happen so we can talk about memories and how the memory and the brain works to trigger those memories. I think it's super interesting, and it's going to be very helpful for, for you all to listen to her and understand I am not crazy. Parties are important because that's how we build memories. And that's how these memories can be carrying on to our families and friends, especially when we're not here. Because it is. Life is short, unfortunately. Uh, all right. So one way that I have that I wrote it down that I think is a great way for you to start thinking in order to create parties that are memorable, it's one, create a strategy. What do I mean by creating a strategy? Do not just do a party for a party. And unfortunately, I do meet customers every once in a while. I mean, it's normal because it's not something that they do every day. So they don't think deeper. And I'll be honest, there's times in my life that I really didn't realize this either. I've been doing parties for 10 years, but it's it, it, I learned this throughout the years and experience and seeing things and analyzing it. And now more than ever, since the pandemic hit, I put one and one together and I was able to understand how important it is when you celebrate something, you know, like every celebration, you hear quotes, you hear stories, you hear all this blah, 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 you read it and you don't pay any mind to it until something tragic again happens to you that makes you start thinking about all those things. And it happened to me, basically, like I've been through like um, this past last three years, my life did like a 360, 360 between losing my mom, going through depression. And then when I'm finally in the middle of depression, getting pregnant, 
in the middle of this whole thing, having a baby. And then, um, how do I say, in the middle of this whole thing, COVID hit. My daughter was a little bit more than a year. And I started to put one and one together of all the years of my life, everything that I've been doing, and how can what I know as knowledge be worth it for somebody to listen and learn from. And truly, that's when I add everything together. Like it, it's really a point of my life that it kind of crash everything down. And I said, I have to do something, you know? And, um, it, which is like, I started writing it down and trying to find ways to educate you all the importance of it is of celebrating the importance of creating, for example, like I wanted to explain these strategies, like for example, when create, when you create a party with a strategy, like a, specifically planned nicely you create these memories in people some people like i was saying they they don't understand that neither do i there's not every party that i done it in the past that i have this ability to think oh my god how can we make this party more more than just the decorations more than just like oh this is the the thing that everybody's doing it how can we do this to be better and it was just after going through all this cycle of my life and being able to analyze and put one and one together that I understood that I can not only help you all to find ways of creating a better design, of decorating yourself, or finding your own vendors, but also finding ways to build these memories the right way, in a way that matters. Because it's not just about the decorations. It's not just about the food. It's not just about like having the most expensive this. It's not more about just uh, having the, oh, the famous DJ coming over. It's not about hiring the best florist or the best famous decorator. It's really not about that. It's really about how can we make it so special that people are going to remember this? How can I touch every single person in that party in a way that's going to be memorable. And that's when creating strategy is very important. I'm going to give you, for example, one example of a strategy when you think and you can analyze and maybe replicate uh, when you're trying to design a party for yourself. For example, one strategy. Uh, let's put it this way. Uh, let's create, I'm going to create a, a, a fictional story okay it's not a real story but let's see like uh i'm a mom that have a kid in a, a biracial in a biracial family for example right and now like let's see i am i am japanese and then my husband is african-american right so now we're getting married and you already know culturally there are um traditional Japanese oriental people, they have their own culture way. And sometimes if they come from a traditional family, it's very difficult for them or for at least the whole family. The intimate people, how to say, the closest people might understand and respect their relationship. But for example, might be a cousin that don't agree with that. And like, unfortunately, people still discriminate, you know, I'm just being realistic and I'm just putting in a way for you to understand a strategy on a party like that. So let's see, like, so this Oriental family, it's really not too much into, um, by uh, like, um, multiracial culture, like mixing with each other or whatever reason it is. And now you have on the other side of the family, the family that it's African-American, they have their own traditions as well. And now you combining these two families to celebrate a wedding or birthday, uh, you know, anything, let's say any type of event that you combining two cultures, there could be totally different together. So one stretch of strategy that you have which is for example when you're creating a, a party that you have two cultures that are different learn how to respect you appreciate each other that seems logical right but not, not everybody does that trust me sometimes we we get a little selfish and we think oh i love sushi i'm gonna i'm gonna order sushi and not because of the multi-family it's just because i love it but for example my mother-in-law and my father-in-law they hate sushi so it's like f if they matter for me it's a type of food that i i can't i have to cross off because 
I want to make sure I please them as well. When you do a party, it's not just about you. What are you doing? For example, like sometimes people don't analyze that. Yesterday, I was at my best friend's um, or helping her organize a party for her daughter. And what made me think about talking about this and learning how to accommodate two cultures together when you're creating a design for a party and this is a great strategy that can bring people together and create these memories is for example yesterday when i was helping my friend her daughter says to me we're like helping her decorate the sweets and, and she's doing the sweets she's a baker right and her daughter turns to me and said oh i don't like what was it that we were making oh cake pops we're, we're decorating the stuff for the cake pops and she heard that and she said i don't like cake pops not for my party i don't want cake pops on my party then i turned to her and i said it remember you don't like cake pops but how many people are you inviting for your party they love cake pops and that's a strategy that you have to keep in mind. You have to understand it's not just about you. So if you're planning a party that has two different cultures, just like I explained, like a very traditional Japanese family, and now you have an African-American family, you have to understand and compromise both sides on your party. Either if it's choosing a thing that's going to be common and normal in both cultures, or you're going to have to think about foods or desserts, things to be included, that it's going to please not only one side of the family, but also going to please the other side of the family. Because that's a strategy that you create when you're planning a party, that you're making people happy. Like I said, it's not just you, you know? And sometimes I see people do their mistakes. You know how many times I sit down with people and say, oh, I don't want any coconut sweets because I don't like coconuts. And I try to explain, I understand don't like coconuts but you have 50 people in your party that might like coconut and you got to think about that you can't just have a party with just one type of dessert or one chocolate because that's your favorite at least when you're trying to create strategies and you're trying to think about not just yourself some people are different everybody's different it's my approach my approach you don't have to follow it and you don't have to agree if you think the party's yours and you're going to do just what you want and you're going to eat only what you want, it's fine. But be considerate of others. Be considerate, for example, also when sometimes you have guests that you know have allergies. Or for example, I done a baby shower during COVID for another of, of person that I know that she's vegan. So like... 99% of the desserts were vegan. Even the chocolate that we used was vegan. The marshmallows were vegan. Like the desserts on the cup were vegan. There were a few desserts that were not vegan because it's the same thing. Not everybody that was invited was vegan. So it was okay to have it. So um, it's nice for you to create that strategy and, I com and create this um, comfortable feeling for your guests to have it that's one way that you can create good memories because the worst thing that you want to do is for example again let's go back to this biracial family right now you're going to plan a party and you're thinking only on your side of the family you're going to just choose foods that your family wants not the other side of the family now you're going to choose the decor and colors and everything according to only one side of the family what do you think that the other side of the family is going to say yeah you know it might not be a good approach and they might have reasons to say i don't like the party or maybe next time they don't want to go because you know what, they might go there and say, it's like, I, I don't eat spicy food. I can't have that. My stomach doesn't tolerate that kind of food. You know, so it, you have to always to be considered. So creating a strategy like this is very important because those are memories that can be triggered either the positive way or the negative way. And of course, we all want positive memories in our parties. We all want everybody to go to our parties and say like, wow, I had the best time ever. The food was delicious, this and that. And you have to think about this, okay? I, it might seem silly, but it's not silly. Believe me, I've done parties for over 10 years. I know what I'm talking about. Another way now that I'm going to share with you that I came up with is 
participation. If you want, create memories through a party. It's very fun and nice for you, not only for you to participate as choosing everything, but also to maybe put some hands on and do something. I give my clients options like that. I do The way I design my parties, I give them the design fee, which is my time, uh, my way of creating everything. But I also give them the chance if they want to participate or not. Some people are very busy, they don't participate. But I find ways to make them included. I like to include my clients in all the decisions making for one of the biggest reasons, so they can be happy at the end. The worst thing that you can do as a party planner, party designer, dessert stylist, is create something that you're not going to get your client involved, and they're going to open up, walk in the day of the party, and they say, I hate it. You know, it's the worst feeling that I could have. It's a customer telling me that it didn't like what I planned for them. That's why my parties, all my clients know exactly where we're doing it. And I show them and I guide them and I try to explain exactly. So this way there's no surprise. So participating, when you participate, it's a great way of you to build memories. Not only, f- why am I saying this? For example, let's see if you're planning um, a wedding, which is typical. It's like so typical. You want to get your groom involved. You want to get your mother-in-law involved. You want to ask people, like um, at least some close people, um, their thoughts about it. Because it's a nice way to say, I care about what you think. I'm going to consider you can take the decision, the final decision, if you agree or not with what they're saying, but it's very important for you to participate them because they're always going to be have that in mind and think. You know, it makes people feel good when they participate, especially children. So for example, when you're planning a party, now you have the kids building the cupcakes. You're creating these little memories like, oh, but let's go bake cupcakes for dad or let's go big cupcakes for grandmother it doesn't have to be a big event so like getting the family involved or the close friends it's very important of creating these memories because they're always going to remember that they're always going to remember oh yeah i remember my um so-and-so first birthday i we sat down the kitchen table we did all the favors until one o'clock in the morning the night before it's a it creates memory, it creates fun things for you to talk about it. And that's why it's so important for you to create strategies as number one, get people to participate, either yourself or your family, so you create can create together these memories as well. All right? Now, the last tip that I'm going to give that I think is very important in order to create a memorable party is... You need to learn how to let go. It sounds weird. What does it have to do with creating memories? But yes. Why am I saying this? I done same thing. I done certain customers. And I even had over here interview with one one of my friend of mine and customers, um, Chris, that she told me exactly her story of her wedding, how like everything was beautiful, her first wedding, she had this decorator who did it. And then uh, she, for some reason, she was so nervous at the day that she looked at the bouquet and she didn't like her bouquet. And he was such an amazing decorator and event planner that he turned to her and he reminded her that everything was beautiful, everything was going to be okay. And it was okay. And she took that breath and she relaxed. He was able to put her together again and say, stop it. If it's one little tiny detail that you don't like it, you can't ruin your day because of that. Okay. And that's why I talk about let go. Sometimes there are problems that can occur that if you hold on to the problem, you're not going to enjoy the day. And if you don't enjoy the day, what was the point of having the party? For one stupid detail that didn't work perfectly. And it can happen. Like today, for example, like I said, yesterday I went to my friends to start organizing a party for today. This morning I got a phone call. We're changing it for tomorrow. Because it's exactly what I talked about last week's life. That weather can influence a party. You got to be able to let go. 
instead of having a Saturday, because the weather is not as beautiful as tomorrow is going to be, we decided since it's a home party, not many people, it was just close friends anyway, she called every single one of us and said, hey, do you mind if I change the party for tomorrow? And we said, absolutely no problem. So we all going to go tomorrow instead of today. It's compromising. Now, if she had said, no, I'm not going to change for tomorrow, you know, and I want it today, today, today only. And now it's the weather's crappy. And now she's going to be sad and mad because the weather's crappy. Was it worth it? That's why I'm saying learn how to let go. If there's one, and this is a major problem because we're talking about changing the whole day, but I'm talking about sometimes a small little detail, like, oh, the, 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 the spoon on the desserts were not lined up perfectly. You know, I, I have a little bit of OCD on that, but I'm just saying like, sometimes it's the smallest, stupidest detail that sometimes doesn't go according to, according, ugh, I can say that. Like, it doesn't happen as you planned, but it should not be a big deal. Learn how to understand that sometimes it's important to let go because the worst thing that you want is the negative memory. Now you're going to be grumpy. Now you're going to be complaining to the party that that was wrong, that was wrong, instead of enjoying the party. Very important for you to understand when it's time to let go or not let go. So I can go on for hours today talking about how can we make memorable parties but i think these three in my point of view are the most important things that you can think about it and learn in order to create a memorable party at least for me those are things that i carry with me as designing parties for somebody else or designing parties for me or even trying to calm down my clients you know it's number one, like I said it, creating a strategy so I can not only uh, please one side of the family but the other, please my guests, not even family, knowing if my f friends have allergies that I'm going to be alert to that and I'm going to provide them a menu or something in there that they can eat so they can remember that party instead of like going to my party and now I don't care if they don't eat food if they don't eat meat you know i'm not gonna have any salads because i like meat now they're gonna go to your party and be hungry i'm like seems stupid but it's not stupid it's, it's honest and real true so create a strategy around thinking about those people that are gonna be there not just you okay that's number one number two is participation make sure you can get your family and friends close ones to participate give their opinions get involved design something together either if it's creating a dessert or even if it's baking the cake for the event uh, a small event at home it doesn't matter like i said it's not about the big event or the small event it's about creating those memories it's about celebrating the right way appreciating what you're celebrating and that's number two and number three, which I think is very important, it's learning how to let go. Let go if something is not as perfect as you want it. It's not perfect as you plan the day of. Do not let one stupid thing, if, even if it was something major like I'm explaining, I'm changing the whole day of the party from today to tomorrow with my friend. I'm like, the whole day, it's not one detail on the cake. It's not one detail on desserts. It's a major thing. It's calling every single person and say, hey, instead of coming today, can you come by tomorrow? It's a major thing. So why? Why are we doing this? So we can have a better time tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be beautiful. She has a gorgeous house with a beautiful backyard and it's going to be awesome to enjoy. Tomorrow is going to be 64. You know, today it's 50. It's a major thing to change. But on the other side, you know, we let go of Saturday. Some people like to have a party on Saturday. We let go of that. So, like, learn how to let go whatever thing that goes wrong so you can enjoy the day. Like I said, it could be something as small as a little spoon that's crooked. It could be as small as the cake colors not match perfectly with the design because it happens. Sometimes you send the design, for example, purple is a color that depending on your iPhone or if you have an Android, your screen can change the color. And sometimes people are so picky about the color that they can't let go and understand there's different tones of it. 
and even seen and like i'm not sure if you guys remember remember years ago there was a story of the who saw the uh, brown dress and who saw the blue dress because people see things different you know it, it seems stupid but like be realistic how to let go things that are just so minor that the worst thing you can have when you are a bride and it's your day, it's instead of enjoying the day, drinking and having fun and building positive memories with your family and friends, is be glued to one detail that didn't work out. Like, no, let go, have fun. Isn't that why you're getting all your friends and family together? You're going to get all your friends and family together to complain of something that didn't work perfectly? Oh, well, it didn't work. Let's have fun. We're here. We're all together, right? So learn how to let go. Very important. I have customers that sometimes right before the party, they start calling. They start going crazy. I'm used to it. I'm used to depression. I'm used to it. Like, it's funny. But I, but I also understand this side because they don't do this as their job every day. So it's normal to them, for them to have second thoughts. It's normal for them to uh, uh, be overthinking over things. But it's also it's my job, at least for me. I love doing it. It's calming them down. It's making sure, no, it's okay. It's normal what you're going through. You don't have to worry about this. No, you don't have to add more desserts last minute. It's fine what you have. It's it, it's just like comfort, comforting them to make sure that they're going to be okay. So like learn how to let go. If there's a problem, yes, communicate, but understand there's way more important things the day of the party for you to be happy for than just stuck to one problem that didn't go as well as you planned it. All right. So these are my tips for how can we create memorable parties today. And I can create a whole series of every day coming here and talking about this because I really think it's important to put that in perspective. What what we need to do, things that we need to create, ways that we have to overthink or think better when we're creating a party. One thing that I can't, it's not that I can't stand, I respect the other side. And I try really hard to, um, it's not that I keep my mouth shut, but like I try very hard not to judge that person which is like sometimes when clients come into me and they only care about the decoration and the price they don't put any feeling towards it you know and um, I have to understand that not everybody's gonna think the way I think and uh, I have to let go of that. I have to understand there's clients that are going to be A clients, clients that are going to care just about the decor. They don't care about like how create these important things on their guests and uh, uh, how to look beyond the decoration, which is fine. They're just like a different type of person that I have to deal and try to find ways to, not sneaky, but to make them understand that side. And a lot of times, trust me, they're very thankful and they understand and they say, oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I know it's a good idea because I've been doing it for 10 years. I know it's a good idea because I have feelings. <laughs> I know it's a good idea for because I see from a different perspective that you do. But it's very important to you to learn how to create memories, learn how to think, overthink, create strategies, participate and learn how to let go. Those are my three main tips that I think you should know in order to create memorable parties. Okay. Um, I'm kind of running today, so I'm going to cut it short. I could talk for hours about this subject because I think it's so important, but um, I will be probably scheduling something more on this subject and uh, and this aspect of the conversation i'm gonna try uh, try to invite this friend of mine to do a live and explain from a scientific point how memory works how we can trigger memories um in our brain like this neuroscience thing which i think is fascinating and i think it's very important for us to learn and analyze that it's not just just laying it going crazy and think um, 
with a heart and a brain and whatever. It's like, I'm not going crazy, guys. Like, it's really important. And um, everything that we do and the parties uh, can have a, an impact in people. So what we want to do is create those positive impact. And that's my goal, to make you all understand this human size of the party. Like, create this celebration and create this memories with your family and loved ones in a positive manner that later on you can always remember yes that was like the best party in the world oh my god yes and it has nothing to do with just decorations like i said nothing to do with just because it was a crazy event with uh entertainment and and this or the famous dj was there it's all about how to create those trigger um uh thoughtful things that your guests can remember either of you either of your child either of the ceremony something that's going to give that impact you know so thank you so much for listening to me i will see you guys on monday night i'm going to be interviewing one of event planners from new york city she's really awesome i hope to see you all there okay have a wonderful weekend and i gotta go Thank you so much. Bye-bye.